In this InDesign tutorial, I'm going to show you a page layout trick and some of the issues with dealing with multiple page um, documents. And this will also showcase the page tool here in InDesign. So what I'm going to do is go to File and Open and in Chapter 10, no, I'm sorry, Chapter 9, uh, the Pages tool. There we go. Getting so close to being done, I almost uh, jumped the gun here. Chapter 9, Folder 6, there's my cover comp. And yes, I am a toy collector geek, so I have been working on this guide for years and years on my on and off time. But the Visual Collector's Guide for Collecting and Completing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Action Figures and Accessories. And yes, these are all from my collection. But you can see I've got frame highlighting on. So as I move around, I'm constantly getting all these little frames showing up. If I hit W, that's how I laid it out. That's why I like to work in preview mode. That looks ridiculous. So W again. And the problem is... All I did was one page for the cover. Well, if you're printing an entire book, and my book is like 350 pages, I would need a spine and I would need the back cover over here. Okay, so I'm going to leave this open, but I need to put together a three-page document that has a front, a spine, and a back cover. Okay, so with this open, I'm going to go to File, New Document, and I need to check the size of that first. What size was this built to? So I'll go to File, Document Setup, and I can see it was just an 8.5 by 11, standard sheet of paper size, so that's good. I'll go to File, New Document, and right up here I'll click Print, so I get letter size sheets of paper and I'm gonna make three pages okay I want them facing each other so they're all lined up I'll come down and we'll set our margins to a quarter of an inch and I'll click create and that's not exactly what I was hoping to get okay look at my pages panel it puts one page up here and then two side by side. So if I zoom out, it looks like that. And that's not gonna work, obviously. So I'm gonna close that up. I'll try it again. File, new document. Let's just do a two page document. I'll have the pages facing each other. We'll keep the same quarter of an inch margin. And that's not happening either. What the heck? I want two pages. Heck, I want three pages. Side by side by side. Not this. That, that's not how you open up a magazine. That's like a magazine or a booklet torn apart. So that's not working either. So here's what I'm going to do. File. New document. This time I'm going to set the number of pages to three okay and let's say actually let's start with two pages okay but the trick here is start on page two skip that first standalone page this guy okay I want two pages that are facing each other and I want to start my document on page two so now when I click create, haha, -ha, I got it. Well, that's great, but I need three pages, okay? So what I'm gonna do is simple. I'm gonna insert another page in between these two. So right here, I'm on page two. Well, technically I'm on page two and three, but it doesn't matter. I'll pull the pages panel out so you can see this. And in the pop-up menu, I'm going to click there, and before I insert a page, well, let's just see what happens. Insert a page. I want to insert one page after page two. 
and now it breaks it up again. So stupid. Just drives me nuts. So I'll go to edit, undo. I at least got the front and back cover, but I need a spine in between here. So what I'm gonna do to kind of insert a page in between these two is go to my pages panel again, click the pop-up and turn off these two check marks. I don't want my pages to shuffle around and I don't want my spread to shuffle around. Now when I click here, insert a page, I will insert one page, I will insert it into my document after page two. So it's gonna be two, then three, then four. There we go, check that out. Got my three pages. But that is one hell of a spine right there. So I can't work with that. That's ridiculous. So here's what I do. I have my front cover. I have my back cover, but I need to resize this page. But the whole document is set up for eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper. So what I can do is bypass that by going in with my pages panel, the page tool. Sorry, that's my pages panel. I could bypass that by going to my page tool right up here on my toolbox. I'm gonna click it, click on the page, and you can see it's highlighted, I'm on the middle page. So now that I've kind of targeted or isolated this middle page, I have my width. And I'll set that down, it's a pretty thick book, so let's set that down to one inch. And I hit return. There we go. There's my back, my spine, my front, and now that I'm looking at this, I really don't need these margins. So I'm gonna come up to layout, margins and columns, and watch what happens here. When I decrease this, it only does it to the spine. Well, I wanted it on all the pages, so I'm gonna click cancel, click, shift click, so I select all the pages. Now I go to layout, margins and columns, and I'll knock these all down to zero. There we go, beautiful. All right, so now I got my pages all set up. Let's put that panel back up where it belongs. Go to my layers panel here, and I'm gonna come back to my cover comp. Okay, I've got all these layers. So you can see right here on layer one, well, I don't think I put anything on layer one. Um, there's the backgrounds. Okay, there's all my pictures, and obviously there's all my text. Okay, I like the layer arrangement because I put things in front, things behind, so this layer arrangement works for me. What I'm gonna do is select everything, and on my layers panel, I'm gonna click the pop-up in the upper right and say paste remembers layers. Okay, I wanna make sure there is a check mark there. I'll go to edit and copy all of these files, the whole layout. Now I come back over to my document and I wanna make sure my layers panel is set to paste remembers my layers, which it is. Now I go to edit and I'm gonna say paste in place. It's gonna kind of center it from top to bottom the way it was. I'm just gonna click and drag and move these over a little bit, kind of center them on that front cover right there. I can hit W. Let's see, that text is a little bit off. So let's zoom in here. And I'm gonna take just my black arrow and my left arrow key on my keyboard. Ooh, that's gonna move slowly because there's so many graphics on here, but I'm gonna hit that a few more times just to kind of nudge it over. I don't need to move it too far here, but I'll hit the left arrow key just to kind of nudge it over a little more. I'm looking at the gap right here between the text box and the spine and that edge, and that looks pretty good to me. 
maybe bump it up a little bit higher. Maybe go like that. Okay, front cover looks good. But these guys were set up to bleed when it was a single sheet of paper. So instead of clicking on this photo and then pulling the picture frame back and then this photo and pulling it and this photo and this photo and this box and this box, it's crazy. I already set this up. I don't want to have to move a bunch of boxes around. That's ridiculous. So here's my layers. Great. I'm going to start up here. Now, these are the layers for this cover. So I'm just going to start on the top and make another brand new layer. And I will call that spine color bar. I'll take my eyedropper. I'm going to sample this green right here. Oops, let's click on. Okay. Notice it didn't sample the green, and that's because this is a text frame on top. So let me turn off the text boxes. And the whole thing was a text box. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. If my eyedropper won't do it, I'm going to take my black arrow. Click right here, because the text frame was covering the entire green box. So I can see it out here. Okay, right. Let's see if I can get that. That's a picture. So let's go right there. All right, there's the green. I'm gonna save that green on my swatches panel. So I'll just click the little new swatch button. There we go. Now I can come up to spine color bar. I'll set my color fill to green and I need a rectangle because it's just gonna be a field of color. I'm gonna start up here for a bleed and I can click and drag all the way down. And that's just gonna cover up those graphics. I don't need to resize boxes, I just cover them up. Simple trick. But I wanna make sure this is all lined up. So I'm gonna zoom in real close. See, I was off a little bit on that spine. So I have to take this edge and pull it back to the edge of the spine right there. And I was off a little bit right here. That's why it always helps to zoom in at the end. And I'll pull that back to my spine right there. Perfect. Now I can zoom back out. I've got a nice clean spine for my book. These figures all stop right at the edge of the spine because I just covered them. And I'll do another layer. We'll call this back cover so what I want is this orange to yellow gradient I kind of like that box so I'm gonna click way up here I've got the graphic see there's the background picture but I also want it on my back cover so it is on this bottom or near the bottom layer so if I hold my option key for a copy and I take this little blue selection indicator and I drag it up while holding option, you can see a plus next to my cursor. I'm gonna add a copy up to the top layer while holding option, and there we go. Now I got a copy of that on my top layer. So I could just click and drag it back over here. There we go. Now I'm gonna line it up with that spine right there and check that out now i just need to add content to my back cover i would add a text frame right here so when people put that on their bookshelf you know when you put a book on your bookshelf all you are seeing is the spine so you have to have some text on your spine but in no time flat i've got my front cover my spine my back cover everything lines up with everything else it's nice clean i hit w so i've got my bleeds ready to go this thing's almost ready for print i just need a back cover graphic or content and i'm good so there you go that's how you use the pages panel or the page ah i keep saying that that's how you use the pages panel in conjunction with the page tool. Got to keep uh, 
Got to stop mixing those up. Pages panel and the page tool. And a couple of tricks for setting up a multi-page document like this. So that was a lot to cover. Go back and review this video. And now you know how to put together a three-page document with a spine that is a different size.